Hey, thanks for joining me on Tropical Weather Impact. It is Thursday, September the 4th, as we continue to make our way further and further and deeper into the heart of hurricane season. There's still not a whole lot going on right now. We are tracking only one disturbance with the Hurricane Center highlighting at least one disturbance. We'll talk about a few other areas that we'll watch, but that's the only one they're tracking at the moment. And so when you look at it as a whole, Things are not terribly active in the tropics right now for September the 4th. I was going back and looking at stats here and on average our first hurricane forms on August the 11th. Now we've already had our hurricane. We've had one hurricane. In fact, that's it and it was a major one. It was Hurricane Aaron a Cat 5. Now the second hurricane on average forms by August 26th, the third hurricane by September the 2nd. And so when you look at these averages here, we are running behind at this point and it is quite rare to not be tracking a single name storm in the Atlantic Basin for September the 4th. Now this will probably become our next depression and maybe named storm. Now whether it becomes a hurricane, there is some question on how much this could strengthen, but there are some scenarios that bring this up to a hurricane. There are also some, some scenarios that don't do a whole lot with it. Now I started with this graphic because I want to create a sense of peace in the United States here with regard to the tropics. There's no reason to stress about this feature because it is so far out. If it were to ever reach the United States, in this case, we're talking maybe two weeks away. That far out is how long we're going to be tracking this. And then there's some scenarios that don't even bring it into the United States. So there's just simply no reason to stress. Now, if you're in the Caribbean islands from Puerto Rico, the Virgin Islands down through the Lesser Antilles, you do need to watch this because you could have a named storm on your doorstep in about a week next Wednesday and Thursday, this is going to be traveling your direction and models have been a bit further south and closer to the islands with what we're seeing. And so as we stand at a hole right now, here's what the entire basin looks like. We've got an upper level low spinning here. You can see some showers and storms with it. That's our tropical disturbance we're watching. It's trying to organize. Hurricane Center is giving it a high chance of development. And also there's an old frontal boundary along areas around Florida and the Bahamas. Now we will probably see some broad low pressure forming in here. There is some potential for that, but I don't see that being a big problem for anyone here in Louisiana or off the East Coast. It's probably going to lift out the sea. Now this is the only feature that really looks like the major player in the game that could become a depression or maybe tropical storm or hurricane Gabriel. Gab Gabrielle. All right, so here's what it looks like this morning on satellite. We do have a well defined disturbance. We've got showers and storms firing in a similar vicinity. The big question right now is is low pressure trying to form? Is it becoming a closed circulation? That's something we are detecting with some of our satellites. These satellites go out here in the deep tropics and scan and give us an idea. They are finding that it's still somewhat unorganized, but we do expect it to begin to organize and that's why they're giving well this large zone the potential that this becomes a tropical depression or a tropical storm. You can see the percentages as of Thursday morning. They're putting it at a 50% chance of development in the next 48 hours and an 80% chance of development over the next seven days. And so within this area here, this is where it's going to be in the next seven days. There's a high chance that we get a depression or a named storm out of this. Now, with that being said, the next seven days, it's not even in the Caribbean yet. And so that's why there's a lot of uncertainty on what this is going to do long term, and we're going to talk about some long term ideas. We're talking 10 to 14 days coming up here in just a bit. Let's talk about what the models are seeing with this, because we do have somewhat of a widespread in our deterministic models being the GFS in red, the European in green here. Let's put it out in motion here. You can see there they agree in the near term that we've got our disturbance trying to organize. But as we get into early next week, we start to see a separation in models. The European model continues to trend further and further south. The GFS model is still a bit further north, but it has been trending south as well. And so these are important trends for the islands down here because the further south it gets, maybe more an impactful system it is. Now there are some scenarios that keep this from developing at all. I know it's showing two systems here, but that doesn't necessarily mean it has a big hurricane. It just shows that you've got an area of showers and storms trying to organize. And so there's some models that keep this as barely a tropical depression. There are a few models that bring it up to a hurricane. There's a couple obstacles ahead of this one being wind shear and some dry air. And so you can see in a week's time next Thursday, if we have a named storm, if we have a tropical depression, maybe a hurricane, 
it could be near the islands and the exact locations still very, very much up in the air. But the trend we've seen over the past 24 hours is that this easily could be near the islands by Wednesday or Thursday. So there is confidence growing that there uh, could be a system somewhere near Puerto Rico, Virgin Islands or the Leeward Islands by next Wednesday and especially into next Thursday. Well, where do things go beyond there? And this is where things get tricky for a lot of different reasons. We aren't quite sure what this system is going to look like by this point. This is 10 days away from now, next Saturday, not this Saturday, September the 13th, and models don't really agree. The European model has a weaker system sitting near the islands. The GFS model has a system ramping up, becoming stronger, and taking some very interesting paths. And so this is where things get complicated. Now we expect that uh, because it's nearly 10 days out in the forecast land here. And so you got to take everything this far out with a grain of salt, but we're monitoring trends at this point. We're using our ensembles, all those spaghetti plots to see exactly what's going to happen here. Now, a couple of these obstacles ahead of this tropical disturbance are some dry air and wind shear. Right now, there's an upper level low spinning out here and there's a lot of dry air associated with it. That's where the current disturbance is. So let's go out in motion. You can see as we go out, went a little too far, but as we go out towards Sunday and Monday, you can see our little disturbance. It's not taking up a whole lot of real estate here. And so that means it's a bit more susceptible to dry air and wind shear. Look at all this dry air. We've got dry air on the south side, the north side, the west side, and the east side. So it wouldn't be difficult for some of that dry air to maybe impact this system if it doesn't actually get its footing. Look at this next Wednesday and Thursday. It's nearing the islands. Look at all the dry air surrounded. So this could be, could being the key word there, the inhibitor for this tropical disturbance to really intensify. That would not necessarily be a bad thing for the islands because we could maybe just have a little rainmaker, but not a hurricane. Now it's hard to say because if this system is able to really close off and protect itself, create an inner core, it could ramp up some. And so that'll be something we watch closely is to see does it protect itself from that surrounding dry air. There's also going to be some wind shear. Now the wind shear is not off the charts out here. There is a big trough off the east coast. Look at all that wind shear. That's going to stay up uh, across the eastern parts of the US. That little disturbance though, is going to be traveling in here. Some wind shear, some dry air on it. And so hopefully that can keep it. But here we are next Wednesday. Notice it's not in a terrible environment, but there is a little upper level low and trough here. Maybe that's pushing some wind shear on it. Meanwhile, your big chunk of wind shear is along the east coast still with this big trough of low pressure. And so as the system tries to lift north, it's not going to be in a bad environment for a little while. I mean, if you've got a system in here, you've got relatively weak wind shear by the end of next week. And so that'll be when we're really watching this thing to see what it does. Now, does this thing ever pose a threat to the United States? Let's just by saying we have no idea right now. Could it? Yes, there are some scenarios where we'd have to watch it a bit closer. There are also plenty of opportunities for this to hopefully go out to sea and maybe never really develop at all. And so what we're going to be watching here is the strength of this ridge and these troughs of low pressure coming down. Now in August, our steering currents are somewhat less complicated. You have less troughs of low pressure and more heat ridges and high pressures sitting closer to the US. Sometimes that can create a fairly straightforward steering current that can be noticed for 10 days or so. Now in this case, as we get into mid September and late September, we start to see more frequent troughs of low pressure that and cold fronts. And whenever you start to introduce more components, you're introducing more room for error and that error only grows bigger and bigger as we go out in time. So in the near term, this thing's stuck under the ridge. We know that it's stuck under this high pressure out of the Bermuda high. It's going to go west and that's why this thing is going to continue to travel west as we go through the end of this week. Now here's where things get tricky. By next Wednesday and Thursday. All right, you can notice what's happening here. If we have a system, let's say we have a system down here near the islands. Here's what the setup could look like. We've still got the Bermuda high, but we've got this ridge of high pressure and an upper level low, still an extension of it along the east coast. If there's a storm down here and it's ramping up and actually moving fast enough, we would want it to feel the tug of that ridge or the tug of that trough and turn it out to sea. 
that would be the best case scenario. And there are many, many of our spaghetti plots or ensemble models that do show that solution of it getting trapped up in that trough and going out to sea. Now, if you've looked at some of the model runs recently, there are a couple that are a bit more interesting, meaning they show a storm trying to come to the US. Why are they showing that? Not necessarily saying that's gonna happen, but why are the models showing that? These are important things to understand. Well, it shows as we go out in time, and this model's not doing a great job at showing that, but as we go out in time, this trough of low pressure in 10 to 14 days starts to weaken, and what replaces it is a ridge. And so that's why the GFS model specifically shows a storm coming towards the US. It shows this ridge breaking down, this upper level low dissipating, and this ridge building back in right in here. And what that does is if you have a ridge building in front of a system, it's not gonna crash into that ridge, it's gonna try to go around it and sneak around it. And so that'll be something we really watch. Now keep in mind, this is over 10 days away. You're starting to get into a time frame that is nearly two weeks out. We have absolutely no idea if it's gonna play out that way. And again, a lot of the models do carve it out to see, but let's just wait and see. I caution you from even looking at those trends with too much of a, an, uh, an eyeglass because this time of year, there's a lot of changes in the atmosphere. Seasons are changing, the atmosphere is changing as we head into our cooler months. And so we just really have to sit back and wait. And I know it can be painful sometimes to just sit and see how things are going, but that's where we stand right now. It's been a while since we've had a named storm. Last one was Fairnaw back in August. Last hurricane and the only hurricane this season was the Cat 5 Aaron. And so we're in this weird little lull right now, but don't think it's going to last longer. As we've seen the past couple seasons, things can sometimes ramp up and ramp up fast as we head towards the end of September and even October could end up being a busy month. That's where we stand on this Thursday, September 4th, though, for your tropical weather impact. We will keep you updated. No stress right now, though, as we continue to track that tropical disturbance. Plenty of time to keep an eye on it. We'll see you right back here on your Friday with the latest. Thanks.